Hello everybody, welcome to another video and welcome to part three of the Power Mac G5 Hackintosh build. So this is the part that I have been both most excited and most nervous to put out. After months of planning, it all comes down to this. Today we are finally going to be building our Power Mac G5 Hackintosh and the excitement levels are off the charts guys. So um, strap yourself in and let's get on with it. As a little recap then, this is our G5. Fully modified with our custom backplate, custom motherboard tray and custom PSU, all in place ready to house our standard ATX PC components. One little prerequisite that needs to be performed before we can get going is the shelf needs to be removed. This is going to give us unadulterated access to the motherboard tray and all of the cabling. Let's get to work then. This is our CPU, the Intel Core i5-4570S. And this is our motherboard, the Gigabyte H81M DS2V. Like any other PC build, the CPU installation is a simple case of lifting up the retention arm, lining up the two notches on the socket with the two notches on the CPU, and simply dropping it in. Once that was done, we needed to install our thermal paste. I'm using my trusty tube of MX4 here again, and this is just really, really great quality stuff. Paired up with the heat efficient processor and the majorly beefy cooling solution, I am expecting some seriously awesome temperatures out of this system. And speaking of cooling, this is our cooler. This is the Zalman FX70 Passive Cooler. And, well, frankly guys, just like my 2015 Hackintosh build, this cooler was a nightmare to install. Zalman tries to cater to everyone by supporting pretty much every socket introduced since the dawn of time, but it honestly just makes installation for all of those people a massively frustrating experience. However, frustrations aside, I did manage to get the thing fitted in the end, and man, does it look awesome. So the last thing we need to do on the motherboard is to install the RAM. And of course, this is just a simple case of lining up the dims with the slots on the motherboard and clipping them into place. And there we go, our motherboard is kitted out and ready to go with our Core i5 processor, beastly cooling solution, and eight gigs of RAM. Next up are the hard drives. So here are the three drives we're gonna be using in the system. We've got the 128 gig SSD for OS X boots, and then we've got the two 500 gig pipeline HD2s for OS X storage and Windows. Hard drives in the G5 slide in on rubberized screws that essentially act like rails. I've never owned a G5 in the past that has come with these screws, and having them make sliding in and swapping out drives a much simpler process. They also dampen a surprising amount of vibration, which will go a fair way towards keeping this G5 as quiet as possible. And there they are being installed. The top drive slides in first and then the bottom drive second. As you can see, I've got custom sleeve SATA cables running along the bottom of the drive cage. This just keeps everything looking as stock as possible and will also make cable management that much easier when we come to install the motherboard later on. So this is how the SSD is mounted. It's held in place nicely by a couple of strips of Velcro and then the cable simply run down the back. And lastly, in goes the optical drive. It's a simple little SATA powered LG DVD burner and then I've simply stuck the original Class 1 laser product sticker on the side to keep everything looking as clean as possible. And there we go, all of our drives are fitted into place, ready to go. Now that this is all done, we can turn our attention back to the motherboard. Here we are then at one of the most exciting parts of any PC build, the motherboard installation. Now obviously this would have been a much simpler process had I tipped the G5 on its side and not had a camera jammed in the way, but after lining everything up and getting that first screw in, it was pretty much plain sailing from there on. In terms of cabling, all we needed was the 8 pin for the CPU, the 24 pin for the motherboards, the 4 SATA cables for the drives up top, and then our front panel connectors. I modified the G5's front panel cabling so we can use the original power button, the original power LED, and the front USB port. I didn't bother with the headphone jack or the firewire port, as honestly, I'll never need them. We're pretty much on the home straight now. Everything that needed doing to the motherboard is all done, so now we can reinstall the shelf. I'm actually really happy with how this shelf has turned out. I've seen a lot of people hack one together and sort of cut it at various angles, but I tried to keep it looking as stock as possible. It's held in really securely with four screws, it holds its own weight without an issue, and it looks absolutely awesome. With the shelf securely in place, we can now install our graphics card. This is our faithful old GTX 660 looking absolutely superb inside this G5. The pretty ugly blue PCB isn't as much of an issue in this build as the card sits upside down effectively, so it only shows really the glossy black fan assembly and the flashy copper piping. 
And last but certainly not least, we need to install the G5 heatsink cover and the dual 92mm intake fan assembly. I think this little touch is really what sets this build apart from the rest. It kills two birds with one stone by keeping that really stock G5 look and covering up about 90% of the unsightly cabling. And there we are, our PowerMac G5 Hackintosh is now a reality. I have put so much time and effort into planning, researching and binding components for this build. To see it come together exactly the way I wanted it to has made this such a massively rewarding experience. So I really, really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Remember to drop a like and subscribe if you did. But as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.